rolling. <clears throat> so normally we go through, um, of course, the county submission statement, um, the commissioners themselves, and the county's organization, organization and structure. I know that everyone that's here at the table is very familiar with that, so we'll skip that part. <clears throat> the first two slides that um, you see are related to zoning acreage of property as well as a variance for rezoning. Many times, especially um, Carmela Briswell, our zoning administrator, she will get questions and people will say, I have a house and I want to build a shed, or I bought a piece of property, I'm not ready to build my house yet and I'd like to move a shed in, um, or I want to build a fence, or I want to build a dog pen, or I want to dig a well. How can I do that? Can I do that? And Gretchen, you know, um, it, it is a part of the Zoning Board of Appeals that you know there is a, a variance process and that, that people can, can really have some odd requests sometimes. Plus the thing that I know, when we moved here, uh, it actually was uh, Ms. Sharon that was very helpful in the office walking us through. They have that nice pamphlet about, I'm going to move in, what do I need to do? Right. You know, do I get my house address first? Or do I get my health department thing first to get my well? Or what are the things that I have to do? Uh, they have a wonderful document. For and so many of those things are contingent on other things. So you really do need to know where to start in that process. Mm -hmm. Because I know even with moving mobile homes in, you can't put your well down until you get a permit. Well, you can't get a permit until you've done something else. Right. And so mm -hmm. it, it can be rather confusing. So we want to make sure that people know that we do have staff available to help you with those things while you do that process. And in a lot of instances, as fragile as that person. Um, if you look at question number three, how can I receive down payment assistance? Um, Lowndes County does have a program that addresses um, question three and four. Does the county provide housing rehabilitation assistance? The county cannot use taxpayer funds um, for an individual project like this. However, the commissioners have approved for the last several years an annual CHIP application, which is a grant program through the Department of Community Affairs. And there are funds they, they're available for down payment assistance, which is what most citizens use the program for, as well as rehabilitation. And you can, again, go through Ms. Briswell to find out how to apply for that. Currently, we have a waiting list. The program's been so successful. But I think since inception, we've helped over 70 families with down payment assistance. And as um, Ms. Carolyn Selby, who works for the Habitat for Humanity, was here and stated during our last commission meeting that this was addressed, this is taking someone who is a renter and making a taxpayer out of them. So it really is a great program, in my opinion. <clears throat> Moving on to something that, um, that Ms. Plissy may be a little more familiar with, why does my water smell like sulfur? Lowndes County does have a water system. Um, we have between five and 6,000 customers. Those are residential and commercial and some industrial customers. And there is a, a taste and a smell that can come from your water due to the chlorine that is required to be added to clean the water. So um, there are some things that you can do um, at your home to cut down on this. There are also some things that um, utilities can do if they're made aware of the situation, such as flushing your line, or they may be able to explain to you based on where you are in the county why you're getting this odor. Either we just had a recent treatment, or it could be that you're in a subdivision that's not totally built out yet. Um, so you may be the only person on that line that needs to be flushed more frequently because that pipe's not being used as often. Or you could be at the very end of a line. And I know that those are a lot of the questions that Phyllis gets whenever people call in and they've got a problem with their water. So the big thing to know there is to, to call utilities if you do have a problem with that and they can explain to you based on where you are um, what your problem is. I have a question about water. Uh, when they changed the water rate and the people from Stone Creek came and whined and complained still when we were over on the other building, uh, that they had bad water and it turned brown and blah, 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 and that was all supposed to be fixed with a new what? Yes, there was um, a water system that was put in for not just the Stone Creek neighborhood, um, but there's a, there's, the, the, there's a water system that services that part of the county. Um, and it was a MIAC system, um, which the short answer to that is it's a cleansing process that uses um, aeration and some tiny beads, mm -hmm. for lack of a better description. So um, but it's, yeah, it is working. Um, it is working very well. Um, but Stone Creek is one of the areas where we do have some houses there that are built um, on the end of lines, or maybe there are only one or two houses on the street. So sometimes you do have a problem with it um, due to that. Um, the next question, why is my water, why is my sewer bill higher than my water bill? Sewer rates are higher than water rates, and the bill is based on the amount of water consumption that we use. And that's why people have two water meters, one for what goes back into the sewer and one that goes for water. In their they may, yes, yes. You can call for an irrigation meter. 
Uh, how is my water tested and what rules are we governed under? Lowndes County is governed by EPD and is required to uphold EPD compliance and all Lowndes County wells are tested monthly. If I have my own well, do I have to tie into the county? No, you do not, um, as long as your well is working properly. However, if you are in Lowndes County service area and your private well fails, then you will be required to look into the system. How much does it cost to install a driveway? Um, we get several requests for driveways or some people refer to them as culverts. That cost um, is determined by the cost of pipe at the time and what size pipe you need and then there's a, a labor rate that's attached to that. So citizens would need to call the Lowndes County Public Works Department at 671-2700 um, to inquire on having a culvert installed. How much does it cost for a trash permit and where do I purchase one? The permits are available annually and they renew July 1 of every year with Lowndes County's fiscal year. That's done for budget planning purposes. Um, you can also purchase one. It is prorated um, at $8.33 a month. So if you don't come um, at the very beginning of the year, then there's $8.33 that's knocked off that cost for every month that you wait after that. Um, and the purchase window for those payments is at the Lowndes County Administration Building on the first floor right off the fire lobby. What are the hours for the recycling centers? Um, we have the hours that are printed here in our handout, and these hours are subject to change based on the cost of the program. That's something that's still being evaluated by our commissioners, so there may be some changes there in the future. How much does it cost to rent the 4-H camp in the Civic Center? Both facilities are rented by the Lowndes County Public Works Department. The number again is 671-2700. The rental costs are based on how much of the facilities that you need to rent, and there are contracts as well as deposits that are required there. Well, so what would be the maximum, like if you run at the whole place, what would be the maximum? I believe for um, the Civic Center, it's around $350 a day maybe. I'm not for certain. I've not looked at those amounts in quite a while. Um, however, if you look under facilities on the county's website, lowndescounty.com, there is some information there. Okay. When will my road be graded? Um, this is probably one of the top five questions that we get asked. And Lowndes County roads are graded on a specific maintenance schedule. All of that is done in accordance with some of the guidelines that have been set forth by FEMA. And in fact, our public works department has been used as an example by Georgia Emergency Management to help other counties set up their road maintenance system. That documentation is kept. Um, right now I can go to the system and we can pull a particular road up and give you the maintenance records for that however long we've been maintaining that road for the most part um, in that particular system. And it not only tells you every time the road's been graded, it tells you every time a citizen is called in a work order for a pothole or for the shoulders to be clipped or a bump in the road or, or whatever. That schedule can, though, be amended based on weather conditions. Of course, if we have a lot of rain, we can't send the motor graders out until that rain stops. So um, we encourage citizens to report road conditions by calling Public Works at 671-2700 and place a work order. And not only will they take care of that work order, but they will also follow up with you to let you know that that, pro that, that problem has been taken care of or why you see it in the state of repair that you do. Another common question that engineering gets is how can my road um, get on the pavement list? Currently, the Board of Commissioners has allocated lost funds only in these economic times for road paving. Um, as you know, there, there are two sides of that argument. Some people very much want their road paved, and some people, under no circumstances, want their road paved. Uh, there is an approved paving, paving list, and engineering can help you with that. Their number is 671-2424. Um, is that list on the website? It is not, because it is subject to change, and that's the problem that we've had. Um, the paving list process itself was probably started 20, 25 years ago. However, every commission that has come in, they have looked at that list periodically, usually in accordance with the SPLOS, and the list has been amended um, based on the commissioner's priorities for their district as well as the funding that was allowed. During um, 2006, the list was taken and prioritized based on whether or not the engineering and design work had been done for the road already, whether or not the right-of-way had already been obtained, and, and just how shovel-ready that project actually was. And that was done to make paving dollars go further. We still have um, hundreds of miles of unpaved roads in Lowndes County. So, so if somebody wanted to see the whole list, how would they see that? Um, we can get a copy of the list as it stands now through engineering and let someone look at it, but it's not something that we just put out for people to, to just pull down a copy of because there are so many variables that can happen with that list. Well, it, if you put it, a it could out at the front to say, this could change, this is as of such a date, mm -hmm. 
one, one that it, <clears throat> we've done that for many years and it doesn't seem to um, help people, especially if their road was on the list and it was taken off the list or if the list was reprioritized. So there's a, quite a bit of, of explaining and questions that come up whenever someone looks at the list. Anything from why is my road not on here to how do I get my road on here to why is this road ahead of my road on the list. Um, so, and those things do change. So we, it's not, I've not gotten a request for someone to look at that list in several years now. Normally people just say, this is the road I live on. Is it ever going to be paved? Could it be paved? What do I need to do to get it paved? And we, the information that people are looking for is how's the list put together? Where's the funding coming from? When's the well, could that, could that information, that information be sure. on the website so that sure. people could have those questions answered? Maybe you don't care to divulge the list itself, but to say those things that you just said, put that on so that people's questions would be answered about how did the list get made, even if I can't see it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, where can I get a copy of my marriage license? This comes in um, quite often, and it's from the Lowndes County Probate Court. Their number is 671 2650. And the next question that we probably get as often is, where can I get a copy of my divorce decree? And that would be from the clerk of Superior Court, and her number is 333-5127. How do I become a notary, or how do I get my notary renewed? Um, this is also through the Lowndes County Clerk of Superior Court. She's located on the first floor of our Judicial Administration Complex here on, on a, Ashley Street on the Sid Savannah Avenue, the old location. <laughs> Um, who do I talk to if I was summoned for jury duty? Again, that would be the clerk of Superior Court. Um, and come with your, your excuse ready and knowing that it's not likely that you're going to get out of uh, jury duty. That is one of the um, privileges that we in, enjoy here in our society. Where do I apply for my business license? This is done through the Lowndes County Occupational Tax Payment Window here in our building on Ashley Street. And their number is 671-2534. Who is my commissioner? We normally get this around election time. The commission maps are available on the county's website, which is lowndescounty.com. The maps that are up, up currently have not been approved by the Department of Justice. So um, we will have all of that sorted out prior to the next county election. Um, but right now, everything is in the Office of Reapportionment. A couple of weeks ago, um, Mr. Pritchard, county manager, myself, Commissioner Rings, and Commissioner Evans, I'll travel to Atlanta to meet with the Office of Reapportionment and look at the requirements that Justice has set forth for the new districts, and they're trying to tweak those lines so that we can um, send them again. How much project. off were they? Just a fraction. Um, but what um, we are being told is that you, you nearly have to have the exact percentage that was approved by Justice for them to pass those districts. And what the, the devil in the details was the census. If we had not had the census, um, so that those numbers were still what they were before, the districts as they are now would have been fine. But since the census has come in and some of the minority percentages have shifted, then the lines have got to be shifted um, to concur with those requirements. All right, plus the population growth is mostly in the north of the county. Yes, yes. Um, so um, you can also call the Board of Elections. Some people don't like to call the county administration office to find out who their commissioners are, so you can call the Board of Elections at 671-2850. We're, we're glad to help you if we can, and we do have maps in our office, so if you don't have online um, access, you can come look at our maps. How do I get a copy of a 911 call? You would fill out an open record request through the office of the county clerk, which is my office, and then 911 actually has to go through a process with every public safety agency that was involved in that call to get their permission to release the information, because it's actually their information. Quite often, um, if it's a recent call, it's still an investigation, and those public safety agencies are not ready to release that information. However, we can always check. Um, who do I call about my neighbor's overgrown yard? That would be Lowndes County Code Enforcement at 671-2730. How do I find out how much my tra traffic citation is? The ticketing agency will provide this information for the Sheriff's Office. It's 671-2900 for the State Patrol. Again, it's 671-2900. The State Patrol tickets go through the Sheriff's Office. For the Boston Police Department, it's 242-2606. The best advice I can give here is don't wait to pay your ticket because many times the tickets fade or you forget what color the car was. I mean, we get a lot of calls. People, you say, well, who gave you your ticket? And people just don't know. So if you're going to be down to the last minute and you're trying to find out where to go at the last minute, just don't let that get to the last minute. 
Um, where do I get information on the deed to my property? Again, that would be the Lowndes County Clerk of Superior Court. All the deeds are recorded in her office. And her number is 333-5127. Where can I get a copy of a birth or death certificate? The Lowndes County Health Department. Vital Records um, Division, and that's 245-2326. Who do I call or where do I go to find my voting place or precinct? Again, that would be the Board of Elections. And their number is 671. 2850. They can also refer you to a poll locator that is available through the Secretary of State's office online if you would like to check that as well. Where do I pay my property taxes or renew my car tag? That's the Office of the Tax Commissioner and Ms. Mary Nell Robertson's office is still located over in the governmental building um, across from the courthouse downtown 300 North Patterson Street and their number is 671-2579. Where do I get my driver's license? That would be the Georgia State Patrol Office on Gil Harbin Boulevard, and their number is 333-8385. That's um, somewhat of a regional processing center for some services that the State Patrol offers. So many times when you call them, the phone may ring quite a few times or it may roll over to another office. And if you're going to have to go, if you don't get there when they open, you're going to have to stand in line. They do a great job of moving people through there. They have an awesome numbering system. It's just the nature of what they do. They just have a lot of people um, and not always a lot of people to help them. So it's it's not a bad experience. It's just if you don't want to wait, get there early. Who do I talk to about child support recovery? Um, the county does not give out legal advice. However, we can, can make several recommendations. First of all, contact your attorney if you have one. Georgia Legal Aid is also available for some services. And then there is a number for child support recovery. That number is 877-423-4746. Who do I call if I see illegal dumping of trash? Again, that would be Lance County Code Enforcement at 671-2730. How do I get a copy of minutes from a commission meeting? The commission meeting minutes are made available after they've been approved the following meeting. The minutes from 2003 to the present, um, for the most part, are available on the website. Anything that's older than that, then you would need to contact my office and we can look those up for you. And my number is 671-2400. How do I find out if a road has been closed? You can call the Lowndes County Engineering Department, which is 671-2424, or you can call me um, at 292-6142 if it's after hours, and I can help you with that information as well. What is the phone number and location for building inspections? This is one that takes a little more to explain sometimes because inspections and permitting for Valdosta and Lowndes County is a joint office that's located over in City Hall right across the parking lot from our building here on Ashley Street. Um, but if you're in unincorporated Lowndes County or inside the city of Valdosta, you would go through that office. And their number is 259-3506. Who do I call to dispute my property tax bill? The Board of Equalization. And their number is 560-4390. There is a window for disputing that bill, and the information is in your bill. So if you've got any questions about that process or those deadlines, we encourage you to also contact the Board of Assessors and their number is 671-2540. So when you get, uh, the chance you get to actually appeal your tax assessment is in the spring when the first thing comes and then in the fall when the bill comes, then it's too late? I am not familiar with those deadlines I'm whatsoever. Have up to me. Okay, 15. From now? Because the bill just came. No. Now. When you, when get, you get, get the thing in the spring, you have up till April 15th to appeal. And then after April 15th, they do all the whatever it is to send the bill in the fall. Um, that question, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up that way. And that's one of those things that, you know, as I said before, here as the county offices, there is certain information and certain procedures and protocols and laws that we all operate and fall under as far as our responsibilities. There are other things that are the responsibility of other elected officials um, or constitutional officers. And Lowndes County has the only elected Board of Assessors in the entire state of Georgia. Um, so that would be one of those things that we would tell them what we know, but we would encourage them, just as Rusty did, but we would encourage them to contact that office for certain. Because if there's been a change or an update to that statute, then it's not something that we would be directly in the line of being provided that information on. So we may not be able to give you the latest and greatest if we've not been updated. So that's where we would encourage you to contact them. The only reason I know this because I did it. <laughs> well, the, the, the thing is, when that thing comes in the spring, it says, this is not a bill. So you go, oh, don't have to pay that, and you throw it over in the pile. But it's going to turn into a bill if you don't make some complaints about it. It's an assessment. Yeah. I think the yeah. Is going to be. So the next question, how do I sign up for Code Red? You can visit Lowndes County's website at lowndescounty.com or call Lowndes County Emergency Manager 
Um, Ashley Tye, 671 Um I would like to say a little more about this, though. Um, quite often people don't call and sign up for Code Red until we are right in the middle of a blowing storm or there's been some um, other emergency somewhere. And then they all want to call and they all want to get on it right then. Well, it does take a day or so if um, whether you sign up online or whether you call into the office because if you call in he has to put your information into the system and then go on the back end and approve you being added to the database if you go online and do it then he still has to go in and approve you being added to the database and if he's in the middle of all of his emergency management responsibilities it might be you know a few hours or a day or so before he's able to get back and update that so we do have some additional clerical staff that can help him with that if we do get in the middle of something. Um, but the best time to prepare is when there's nothing going on. So please add updating your information in the Code Red system or signing up for Code Red as part of your general preparedness um, efforts. This is also a free service to all Downs County residents. And this system will only be used in the event of emergency or twice a year we do do a test call just to make sure that our numbers are going the way they should. And of course we want to test it when we're not going to need the system to make sure that everything's functioning properly. Does the county have a suggested emergency preparedness pamphlet or book or say, you know, what you should have in your first aid kit or um, something like actually, that? Actually, um, the Ag Council worked with, um, with FEMA and that program was funded and handed down to all of the states. And if you go to um, ready.ga.gov, that is Georgia Emergency Management's one-stop shop for all kinds of preparedness for any sort of man-made or natural disaster that you can think of, um, as well as um, just you know general checklists for your home or your business. There's um, a ready.ga.gov section there for kids, so you can get your entire family involved. Um, and it also talks about special needs and pets. So that's something that's been provided to us through the state that is so comprehensive, there's no reason for us to reinvent the wheel at the county level. And counties are extensions of the state constitution and the state government anyway. So whenever we work with Georgia Emergency Management, if there's something here in Lowndes County that affects all of Lowndes County, the county as a whole and the unincorporated area, as well as the uh, five municipalities that we have here, then those municipalities report to emergency management, emergency management, then in turn reports to Georgia Emergency Management. So that's kind of our, our funnel there for that response. If we had a storm or natural disaster, where do I go? Can't tell you that until it happens. Um, that's something that we really encourage citizens to stay tuned to local media, make sure that you're signed up for Code Red because we would definitely use it to give out sheltering information, um, be aware of your surroundings. Um, sheltering is really determined by the nature and the location of the event. So just, you know, stay put until you get some information and some direction on what to do. The only other thing I would add to that is please don't call 911 unless you do have an emergency at that point that is related to what's going on or some other type of actual emergency. Many times whenever the clouds get really heavy here or we got, get a lot of rain or it starts, you know, the wind starts blowing and a tree goes down, people begin to call 911 for general weather information or, um, or other issues. So please make sure that you call 911 only in the event of an emergency because they're overwhelmed if we're in the middle of a weather event dispatching the first responders to the other calls that are coming in. So just be aware of Is that. Is there a number that people can call if it's not an emergency but they want to get something dispatched? So say there's a tree down across my road um, but it doesn't have any wires down on it. So the I, tree across the road would be considered an emergency because someone can drive right smack into the middle okay, of that. So it, that would be okay, a 911 okay, call. Okay, so but is there a number that I could call for a I need to report something, but it's not an emergency. I don't need somebody to respond this instant. But just now, number one is still your. Would, there's not a general dispatch. No, because all of those um, responding resources are the same pool of resources. So they they have to stay in in one chain as far as being dispatched. It's just like the article that was in the paper today about the um, the fire and the one of the county fire trucks driving past the home that was burning on their way to another call because they had been dispatched to a wreck. They saw the fire, they called the fire into 911, but they couldn't stop there because 911 had dispatched them to another location. So the emergency management service and chain of command as a whole is something that absolutely has to be respected within that response because if not, um, you know, and people start in the fire service doing something that's called freelancing, then no one's in charge and you just have chaos. So there is a very disciplined um, dispatch for that. 
um, public works sometimes if we get in the middle of a hurricane will stage at 911 in the past now since we have our new emergency operations center there would absolutely be there someone there for public works so that um, whenever that call came into 911 the 911 would have a particular place that they would put all the tree calls to or all the lines down calls to or all the hole in the road calls to or the washouts to um, so there are some internal protocols that we do um, to make things more efficient during the dispatch process, but all citizens are still encouraged to come out. Sheriff's Department dispatch through the mm -hmm. all emergency. Yes, yes. Yes. And really and truly, um, if if you need the sheriff's office, then you have an emergency. You know, I know some of us, depending on how independent we are, how familiar we are with the ongoings of the county, um, in general know a little bit more about where that help is coming from or what they're going to do whenever they get there. Um, but if you need the sheriff's office or you need the fire department, you Become may have a small emergency as compared to a large emergency, yeah. but you still need, you know, that public responder, that public safety responder there. What is what is 911 doing to the prevention of I've lost my cat or some obscure question that should be able to come through? We start very young. <laughs> Every year we have um, 911, um, we have telecommunications week, and they see thousands of children through the center during that week and have for many, many years now. In fact, the kids that are graduating now from our public school systems are kids that in kindergarten came to um, 911 through telecommunications week. So we've got a long history there of educating locally on, on when to call 911. But I'm glad you said that because the fire department will not come get your cat out of the tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so small. They say when it gets hungry, it'll come, it'll come down. down. Have you ever seen a cat skeleton in <laughs> a tree? Um, so where do I turn in my job application, and how do I find out what jobs the county is offering? Um, the county, the jobs that the county offers are um, listed with the Georgia Department of Labor. They're at uh, 22 um, or 221 South Ashley Street. Their number is 333-5211 and they can help you with what we have posted and that's where you would also need to pick up and turn in your application. You can download an application off of our website on uh, loungecounty.com but you would still need to turn it into the Department of Labor and not bring it to our building here. What volunteer opportunities do you have available? This changes based on um, you know really what the county has going on and what programs are available but if you're interested in volunteering or you would like an intern opportunity if you would just contact me here my number is 671 2400 then I can let you know what's available. Um, the aside to that is anyone who is um, wishing to be appointed to a border agency, you're welcome at any time to send your interest in through an email, you're welcome to send a resume. Um, we actually have a form now that the commissioners would like for you to complete. We can give you that um, and, and we'll have you on record so that whenever that comes up then you can. Is that form available that. on the website yet? It is not yet, um, but it will be. I've not gotten that since I get a nod from everybody, but I have all the information that they want on there that we get to go. But we'd still like for you to call even if you pull the form down because um, people generally still have questions as far as um, is this, you know, when is there a county appointment available, when is there a city appointment. And we have all of that on all of our boards and agencies, usually. Is that available for the website? most part? It is not available on the website. Um, and because it's not something that I can guarantee as far as the accuracy goes. Um, we may not put that on the website, but we'll work with you on a case-by-case -case basis. If you give us a call or send us an email. Is, is it at least a list of um, the 22 boards and authorities that people might want to volunteer for on the website? We're, that's going to go up in the form, okay. as, as well as, you know, uh, some brief information. Um, sometimes, you know, people need to contact um, the commissioners regarding their availability to be appointed, but they also might want to talk to the chair of that board or authority or agency just to find out for sure